All right. So like I said, in today's session, we'll be classifying image data, that is yoga poses data, uh, using BigQuery ML. And there are three highlights. One is we will do the entire classification model using SQL queries, BigQuery SQL only, no other form of code. And number two, we will be storing, querying, and um, all the model creation, everything um, in BigQuery, which is like literally storing unstructured data in BigQuery. Traditionally, we we know that we will do structured data analysis and analytics using BigQuery. Now we have the ability to do unstructured data classification with BigQuery as well. And number three, we'll also see how to join, write a join query just like you would on two relational tables. You can see how to write a join query or between structured data and unstructured data, two tables, right? So that is what we're going to see today. Um, like I also said before, we won't be doing the, we won't, you won't be actually implementing the ML creation part, you will see, but we'll go through all the other steps of the code lab and you can start doing it. The first five, six steps you'll be doing along with me. Okay. So these are the five steps basically to create that model. One is creating the data set. So this is where we are creating yoga data, yoga table data set in BigQuery. And um, we will create a big lake connection. So why this connection in need is needed, I'll tell you in a little bit. Now, I'm talking about yoga posts, which is stored as images. So where will you store those images? It's unstructured data, right? So for that, we are going to use an unstructured storage option, which is cloud storage. Google Cloud Storage is the service we are going to use to store image data buckets we'll create in we'll create a google cloud storage bucket and we'll store images inside that and then grant permissions that will allow uh, this bucket to be accessed from the uh, access between a uh, big query uh, and the big lake connection now why do we need the big lake connection this is to establish the connection between these two the data set and the cloud storage so object now we'll create an object table. This object table is the one that will actually contain the reference to the cloud storage data. We'll when we create this table, we'll also store the data that is uh, that is needed for these images. So all that will be stored in this object table. And finally, the second last step is to create the model and upload the model to Google Cloud Storage. So for this demo, this experiment today, we will be using one existing uh, pre-trained model from TensorFlow Hub. We won't be creating our own model. We'll be using a pre-trained um, classification model from TensorFlow Hub. And um, for that, you need to store the model folders into GCS, uh, which is Google Cloud Storage bucket. Same bucket where the images are stored. That is where you need to store the model files as well. Once you store it there, now load that model into BigQuery and start. Uh, it will it will it will train your images for this pre-trained model. So it, it will it will apply the pre-trained model um, inference on the image files that you have stored there. And it will load them. We load the model in the last, the last step. We load the model into BigQuery uh, ML. And then we'll use a simple SQL query to predict uh, a particular image, image file or yoga pose and identify or classify that particular yoga pose uh, using the model that we have just loaded. Right. So these are the steps. So let's start with the requirements. We've, we've already completed that. Uh, next step is to create the schema in BigQuery. So now, um, since you have enabled BigQuery API, you should be seeing the BigQuery um, Explorer on the left. You should see all these um, editors, explorers, all the data sets. If you already, if you already have some data sets, you will be seeing that there. In our case, just copy this. Uh, first of all, you have to create the data set before you do, do this. Create the data, step A, create the data set, uh, yoga underscore set using the steps shown below. So we are going to create that here. Go to BigQuery editor and type this command. Copy this command, create schema and run it here in uh, the BigQuery editor. Since I already have my um, yoga set, I'm going to rename it. But in your case, you can use the same uh, schema name. So give your project ID that you can find right here. Project ID dot uh, data set name you should provide. And then click run. Oh, it's already there, so it will fail for me. Yeah, already exists. So I'm not creating it, but I'll create it. Um, code Vipassana 30 March. 
have created this. So are you all able to follow along? Everyone has created your uh, query data set. If anyone needs time, just ping me on the chat. OK, that step is done. So going on to the next step. We need to create the big lake connection, like I said. Right? Create big lake connection that allows us to connect the external data source while retaining fine grained BigQuery access control and security. Uh, in this case, our external data source is cloud storage. That is where we are going to store the images. We will use this connection to read objects from cloud storage. So we will follow the steps below. So now what you have to do is click Add Data on the Explorer pane of the BigQuery page. So going back to BigQuery page, uh, where do you see Add Data? Right here, Add Data. Where do I not see it? Oh, okay, click the add. It's not add data. I think something has changed in my console. But anyway, click add data. Uh, if you click add on the Explorer, you should be able to see this uh, screenshot. No, I'm sorry, not screenshot. You should be able to see this um, sliding dialog. And it says add data. Here in the search bar, I'm going to give. Uh, click add data on the Explorer page. And then click connections to external data sources. So third one. Local file, Google Cloud Storage. So I'm going to do connections to external data sources. I'm clicking that. Once you click that, connection type. In our case, go back to the code lab. You can see that the connection type is Big Lake and remote functions. So select that. Choose Big Lake, the last option. And then provide a connection ID. Let's say it's code the personal connection. What connection ID I've asked you to provide? Provide that only. Anything is fine, I guess. Okay. Oh, no, no. Copy paste that. In our example, the connection is yoga post con. So you can use that. I will also create that. One hyphen uh, CV March 30. In your case, you can just retain what is there in the code lab. And then for region, you need to note which region you're selecting. Don't select multi region for now, select region. And I'm going to choose US Central 1. You can feel free to choose whichever. But then remember which region you're choosing. And then click Create Connection. Now, connection is created. Go back to our code lab. You need to take save this service account ID because we will use it later. So copy paste this in a notepad file, if you like. Otherwise, you have to come back to this page. So just copy paste your service account and copy paste your location also if you need it and your connection ID also. Just take a note of all these things. Go back to your code lab. Click next. Now, uh, Sophia, you asked me what is cloud storage. So I'm going to show you that right now. I'm going to tell you what cloud storage is basically used to store unstructured data. Uh, like files, images, videos, uh, text files, whatever it is, you can store it in a bucket, any blob structure, you can store it in a bucket. And there's a lot of um, um, configuration parameters you can consider whether you want to do standard storage or you want to go for archival, near time, long time storage, cold line storage, many options are there. Uh, for the sake of this experiment, we'll just go with the default ones, but just read about it, when to choose what like design aspects you need to consider. But for now, we'll go with the default ones uh, for the sake of this demo. OK, so basically, we have image files which we are going to query through BigQuery and create model for. But for that, you need to store the image files in cloud storage separately and then process it through BigQuery. So how are we going to do that? Now let's go to cloud storage, go back to Google Cloud Console, and open cloud storage from here. Google Cloud Storage, you see cloud storage option? Select that. All right, once that is selected, you see buckets there. And right next to it, you see the option to create. 
you can click create and i forgot to tell you where the data is um, i think it is there in the first if you go to the introduction not the introduction step number 3 create data set and a big lake big lake connection right so there i have given a link for our use case of image detection of five yoga poses i have used publicly available data set and you can access the data set from this repo so open the repo in another tab it will open a github repo and there you can see five folders down dog goddess pose blank pose tree pose and warrior two pose so only these five will be able to infer copy pay, uh, sorry uh, download these or you can directly upload them into cloud storage but i'm just telling you where the source uh, image files are so this is where you can reference that now come back to cloud storage name your bucket choose where to store your data in this case region make sure the region that you selected for um selected for creating the what did we create before the connection right external connection make sure that region and the region you select here should be same us central one there also we selected us central one so make sure you select that right and then continue oh, only lowercase okay and then hit continue standard we are going for standard um, type of storage storage class and then control access for now i'm just going for uniform control access enforce public access prevention for now i'm just in disabling it but you can keep it enabled it won't impact the process click next how to protect object data for now i'm just going to leave it at none and hit create so once you do that the bucket is created now this is like a container now you need to upload folder right because um we have just created the container. You have to upload all the folders into this uh, that we that I showed you about the uh, yoga poses, right? So you have to call down like basically you can drag and drop and not drag and drop possibly just select that upload. So this will upload so many files. So continue to do that. Um, if you want, I know this is pretty time consuming, so you can probably keep it to a minimum. Maybe just store uh, one folder. Don't don't store all the folders, okay? Just do one record, and I'll give you like two to three minutes for your upload to complete. Don't do all the folders. Just select one, download one, and upload one. Okay? Is everyone able to follow along? Ping me if uh, if anyone has got up to this level. Okay. Thanks for the confirmation, Shreyas. Anybody else? Saran, okay, thanks for the confirmation. Okay, so if you're able to upload that, that's good. In my case, I already have this pre-uploaded one also. Let me open that. What is the name I'm suggesting here in the code lab? Mm. Name your bucket, yoga poses. So. Okay, so I have all the things uploaded. Uh, you feel free to just upload one folder. Okay, once that is done, let's go to the next step. Uh, now, the next step is you have to make sure that um, you notice the service account, bucket name, and the path. So how will you know that? I think I skipped that step. Okay, going back to the uh, bucket details in your um, Google Cloud Console, Go to cloud storage, go to bucket details. The thing that you just created, right? Go back to that, um, click that bucket. Yeah, once you click that bucket, you should be able to see. Where are my bucket details?
the region make sure you know the region that is definitely there but where is the service account here a uh, path so copy this path also you see gs util uri copy this path gs colon this path is needed take a note of that in your notepad what else is needed bucket name and path name and path is enough anyway uh, bucket name where is the name of the bucket it's there right there on the title so copy that and note down this path gsutil uri that's it now we're going to the next step once the bucket is created store your images you've already stored the images so that's fine grant necessary permissions for the connection service account we remember we already copied the service account uh, from the connection here in the notepad so this service account should be given access to this cloud storage right and grant necessary permissions for the connection service account to access the images so basically copy these things you can also do one at a time copy export um this thing and the second step so let me copy this first to the notepad because you need to replace the service account this one right with an angle bracket so delete that and replace that with your actual service account that you copied from before paste here now run the first command in cloud shell so all of you are familiar with cloud shell we have seen it four times in the past um in each uh, every week that we did a project so click this activate cloud shell on the top uh, right corner right after the search bar on the search button you should see this um right angle bracket followed by an underscore within a square so like with inside a box so that is your activate cloud shell button click that and paste this command we've just copied that's it and copy the next here before copying the next you need to change the gs util uh, the cloud storage path so remove uh, don't have to remove much yeah you can remove from gs colon to the right uh, close angle bracket delete that and paste the URL that we just copied from cloud storage there. Okay, so that is done. So copy this JSUtil command, go back to the cloud shell, enter it. It'll ask for authorization, provide authorization. It will open up a pop-up dialog. That's it. <clears throat> to allow. That's it. So this is done. Access is provided. Now going back to the next step. Sorry, going to the next step, creating an object table. So, so far we have created a BigQuery data. Well, how to, sorry, once, um, I also deleted the project, still it's showing me in the projects, how to permanently delete the projects. Uh, we'll see that at the end of the session, Shreyas, I'll come back to that. Right now I'm hoping you're able to continue with the thing. Uh, stuck with connection ID. Sophia, uh, you're not able to get the connection created? Sophia, you've, you you made progress or you're stuck there still? Uh, you you're stuck there, Abhirami. I couldn't find out the connection ID. Sorry. Uh, you couldn't find the connection ID. What do you mean? Which connection ID? Which step? in the code lab uh yeah actually i try try to add the data now then i uh given connections to external data sources mm -hmm. now it asks for the connection id right uh so where should i copy oh, no, it from no, 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 no. connection id is just a string it it you're creating you're giving a name so copy name copy the name from the code lab itself if you scroll down go to step three in the last line in the last line you see yoga pose con okay that is okay paste that it can be anything you can keep your name also that's okay this is a sample connection okay, okay okay yeah fine thank you so that is what i was got, i got confused like already you created something okay okay no no just provide that name um yes, so i'll sure. give you i'll give you two minutes to catch up on the next steps let me know if you're able to create the cloud storage okay 
Yeah, sure. Uh, Shreyas, uh, you all, sorry, you all, we discussed that. Sahil, you said me too. So does that refer to the project deletion or you're referring to the connection ID? Connection ID. So now you know, right? You can just give this text, yoga con, or whatever you want. It's, just remember what name you're giving, that's all. Cool. So meanwhile, for the folks who joined now, um, so we are just going through this uh, code lab of creating uh, image, basically storing image data in Google Cloud BigQuery. And um, querying that using SQL, basically you're querying image files or image data using SQL. And we are going to see how to create a model theoretically, but we'll query practically like uh, everyone else is doing. You will create this database table, you'll create external connection, you'll link it to the cloud storage images, and then you'll be able to query it. So that's what you're going to do as an exercise. But the code lab has all the steps, including creating the model and predicting the uh, using the model. So I've pinged the link to the code lab in the chat for folks who have joined new so that you don't have to um, like wait around. You can go to the code lab and start following the steps one by one. We are not going to go back to step one. We are already in step uh, four or five right now. So you, you can catch up slowly. Um, so basically, uh, you just have to create a BigQuery data set. Uh, you have to create cloud storage bucket. And then you have to create a connection, a separate connection, uh, external table connection and then that's it those are three steps we have done so far so please go ahead and do that uh, meanwhile we will continue with the rest of the code lab uh, sophia can we pro continue proceed oh another one we have done is granted uh, permission to the service account of the connection to access the image storage bucket the cloud storage bucket so that's what we have done so far. Next step is to create the table that will actually contain uh, the BigQuery external table that will actually contain the images. That's what we're going to do now. So can we proceed? Is, uh, Sophia, is that OK? OK, all right, let's proceed. Next step, um, creating an object table. So. This is the object table from BigQuery, external object table from BigQuery to access the unstructured data in the bucket using the connection we created. Run the below create SQL command from BigQuery editor. So just copy this query. Go to your Cloud Console BigQuery editor, which you kept open already. Mm, you can just click the query or already there is a query tab open. So whatever is convenient for you, open that. I'm just going to use a tab that is already open and paste the copied query. Here you have to provide the table name, data set and the table name, um, which I just created. So this is the data set and the table name. So I'm going to copy this and replace the uh, tags content with connection. So US dot connection name. So this is the connection name that we gave before that we created. So I'm going to copy the connection uh, name. In your case, it will be yoga-pose-con. I created a custom one because I already have the connection. So I'm going to replace this. So remember the connection ID that you created. So that is the ID that should go here, us dot that one. And the next one, options, nothing else changes. The URI for uh, the folder that you should provide. Right, folder if exists. So I'm going to copy that URL right now. That also we have saved, if you remember. So I'm going to copy that up to the bucket part, not more than that. Then you have folder if exists. So if you have a folder, then replace that folder name. In your case, you created a folder, one of the folders, right? So you can give that, or you can just leave it at star.jpg. If you don't have any folder, you can just uh, leave it at this. Why is it saying an error in my data set ID? Okay. 
Oh, I'm so sorry. I made a mistake. Um, external table name that you're creating, right? This table name should be uh, should not be the same as the table name you created before. It should not be the same. This should be a new name that you should provide. So here you can provide uh, your any any name that is not the one you created before. Next process. Right, and then run it. Oh, sorry, data set name you have to provide, right? So remember what your data set name is? You created a data set, right? Yoga underscore set. So remember to provide that as well. Dot table name. So here I've mentioned data set dot table name. Same thing, follow data set dot table name. You don't have to provide the project uh, name unless it throws error. So let's see. Mm, it cannot find the connection. Why? Just created the connection, no? Oh, it's in a different data set. That's why. Yoga set underscore CV. Pretty much. OK. Still. US hyphen central one. OK. So make sure this is not US dot. In your case, it should be US hyphen central one dot because we chose that as a region. No? So you make sure you provide the right region name. Otherwise, it won't be able to identify. Yes. OK, so what a mistake I have done is I have created a data set in US location, but then I have provided the connection um, name as US Central One. So there is going to be a mismatch. So that is why I'm getting this problem. But in your case, if you're, um, you will also get the same problem if I'm not wrong. So what I'm going to do is I have to create a data set also in US Central One. It allows me. No, it doesn't allow what is going on. Give me a second. Let me see what is happening here. External table. OK. Let's try to add this connection again. External data source. Oh, uh, OK. So that is the thing. The connection that I've created is basically, you can leave it as multi-region also. So let me try that right now. If you're also facing the same error, go back and create the external data source connection again. Click the Add button over there, and it'll open up a sliding uh, dialog. Click that and provide another connection name, maybe yoga-con-2 or something like that. And don't, don't change this region. Uh, just, just leave it as multi-region. That way it points as US. Right? Create connection. Now the connection is created. Go to connection and copy the service account again. This time the location is US, so we won't have that problem. Um, so let me copy the service account ID. Now, what else we have to do? Uh, this service account provide in the, um, this service account we should provide in the access path because we need to provide access to this um, service account as well. So I'm going to execute those two commands again. So go back to console, so go to your, execute these two commands again for this new service account that we have got, right? Because I accidentally created the data set and the external connection in two different locations. So that's the problem. All right, now it's done. Now let's go back here and see if the connection in BigQuery, let's go back to BigQuery. 
Now you see the yoga con two. Now this is the connection I'm going to use in this create external table query, which is showing error, right? So I'm going to give it as data set dot table name, right? So data set name is um, yoga set CV 30 March. So nothing changes over there. I'm going to keep it as such. And here in the connection part, it's not US central one. It is US only US dot. And then I'm running this here. Some message. Yeah. Does someone have a question? No. Okay. Okay, so the connection name, new connection that I've created is called yoga hyphen con hyphen two. Run this query again. All right, now my external table is getting created. Created. All right, it's already created. So basically, the mistake that I did here is that I created the data set um, first. Initially, I created the data set in. Uh, which location? I think I don't know. I, I didn't select a location there. But then I created the connection in multi-region previously when I did the code lab. But when I did the experiment today with you, I changed it to US Central Region. You have to keep it in US itself, right? Because when you're uh, actually creating the big data, uh, the the BigQuery data set, it is by default probably uh, I gave it a US location. So they both should live in the same location for it to work. Um, so one was in multi-region US and the other was in US central one. So that's why it wasn't working. So now I fixed that and I ran this create or replace external table query. So we are in this step. This query is successful. I am able to create the external table. So if you want to see that, go back to the data set in BigQuery. In our case, this is yoga set CV. So under that, you will see yoga hyphen ext hyphen poses. So that is the one I've created just now. Now that step is done. The next step. Once you create that, since you're using the URI as um, GS, this is the Google Cloud Storage URI, right? GS Util URI that you have provided. This also has the files that you want to copy to this table. So your data is also loaded. So how can you check if the data is loaded? Copy the query that you see right here in this step five and run it here. You have to change the name if you are using a different data set name. If you're using a different table name, so replace that in the query. Here, my uh, I have this folder. I have this URI still working for me. In your case, you have to replace the name of the bucket and name of the folder if you have renamed. If you have not renamed, if you use the same folders, it is good. Don't worry about it. Just go ahead and run it. So I'm going to paste this, OK? So basically, this is a query which selects the fields data and URI from this file, sorry, from this table, yoga external poses, where regular expression regex contains, where URI basically contains this term, the name of our uh, the, the name of our storage uh, path, storage URL, cloud storage URL, and down dog. So I don't know which folder I copied. Let me go back and check so that I'm searching for the right one here. Um, I just created that in cloud storage. I think I created yoga images CV underscore March 30. So I'm coming back. I created warrior two. So I'm going to copy that name. Otherwise, it won't be able to find it. Right. So sorry, not here. Go to BigQuery. Um, go back to the query part. And instead of down dog, I'm going to do warrior two because I copied only one folder and that's warrior two. So I'm going to run this and see if the data has been copied. Yes. So I have only one record returned because I've limited the query to one record. Um, you don't. You also do this because query. Uh, I I think you still have a sandbox environment and you won't be charged, but it's better. It's just for testing purposes, right? To see how to write a query on data. Sorry, on um, this thing. Um, query editor in BigQuery and how to query your unstructured data format. So that is why you need this. 
Now you can see uh, the fields data and URI populated. If you want to see all the fields, you can do select star uh, also and see what all fields are loaded with it. That's it. So you're able to see the content type. You're able to see what all uh, fields are loaded. Now you can notice that um, the actual data itself is stored as a uh, code is stored as a hash value, which is in data. You won't see that unless you explicitly call that field out. So that's why I did data, uh, data comma URI. Uh, now, how to visualize this post is something that uh, you can see in this documentation itself. So now that we have got this query, how will I visualize it? Right? So for that, what I've written is a small Python snippet just to visualize that particular uh, image data um, column as a as an image. Alternatively, you can also run BigQuery queries directly from this uh, Python Colab, uh, whatever uh, Jupyter notebook or whatever notebook you're following. So here I'm going to open my Colab notebook. You can also use your Jupyter notebook if you have it handy. So I'm going to open my Collab notebook where I can write this small snippet and see the data. All right. So basically what I've done is um, I have got the result here. Export this result into a CSV, right? Save this results because you can also automate this whole thing. But right now I'm not doing it for the sake of demo. I'm just exporting this as a CSV or whatever file format you want, and read that CSV here in my Python code, which you can see right here. I've uploaded this file here. I'm reading it, and I'm converting that into an image. So you can see that the data uh, that's stored in BigQuery, what uh, whatever I'm uh, searching for it. In this case, um, if this is for downward dog, I'm just showing you a script, uh, the file that is already stored. I don't have a, I haven't uploaded it right now. The reason is, um, since we are at time, I don't want to create this, uh, wait for this to be uploaded, but maybe you can try it. It's just uploading the uh, file right there. It's already uploaded. Now I'm going here and go to folders. Um, I can just upload the file that I just downloaded. CSV, right? And then copy the name of the CSV from there and replace this. You should be able to. Yeah, so our file is loaded or not no okay so let me upload it i don't know why it's not uploaded okay all right the file is uploaded now so i've replaced that as well so i'm just going to run this okay so it's one of the warrior poses from that file okay all right, so now we are done with um, what all we are done with. Let me go back to this one. Yeah, so we are done with displaying the image. Um, alternatively, like I said, you can also query, um, write BigQuery commands from your uh, notebook, from your Python notebook, by just using a percentage, percentage BigQuery. They are called magic commands. So where you can see that is if you go to step eight, in your code lab, in the end, you will see all of the queries we have covered in this blog can be run directly from your Python notebook using the BigQuery magic commands. There is a link over there. Click that link to see how you can actually write BigQuery commands in Python. So that way, you don't have to switch back and forth between BigQuery editor and uh, Python edit uh, and your Python editor. Um, some basic enabling things are needed, uh, but that is available in this documentation in this link itself. So you can follow that. And with that, what I wanted to cover as part of hands-on for you is completed. There are two steps, however, which is part of this code lab itself, which is creating the model and uploading it into cloud storage and loading the model into Big, Big, uh, BigQuery and inferring it. So I'm just going to walk you through that, even though you won't be doing it along with me, just watch or just listen. 
So in this implementation, like I said, we are using a pre-trained ResNet 50 model from TensorFlow Hub. If you go to this link, you will be able to download the files that you need. Okay. Now, uh, we need to have the necessary permissions in place for accessing this. So make sure that model is downloaded from this location, save it in your local, and then unpackage the files from that location. There are two, one folder and one file, uh, which is required. Mm, see, it's getting downloaded. If you go in there, um, you will see there are two uh, files, and those two files should be loaded in the same page, place as your images. So if you go to Google Cloud Storage, which I've created, um, the bucket that I've created, I have created, downloaded the model there. So go to that yoga images um, bucket. You have you see all my yoga post files, and then I have two model related files, .tb file and a variables folder. So both of these are part of the pre-trained model and you need to save this here, all right? So once that is done, um, upload these two into the bucket, which I told you already. This is the highlight. The highlighted one is the files that are related to the model. Now that's about it. Once the step is completed, your model related file should be present in the same bucket as your images as seen in the image, right? And then next step, now that the model um, pre-trained model is in your images folder, you have to load the model in BigQuery. So for that, you need to write a simple query, another query. Just create a model, sorry, create model, uh, data set name and your model name. Model name is anything that you want to name your model, anything. You don't, you're not, you've not created this before, so you have to create a new name for the model, right? And this is the syntax. The only thing you need to change here is the data set name, model name, and the bucket path, the name of the bucket, slash star, that's it. Once you do that, it will take a few minutes. And once it's completed, you should see this here. The reason I'm not executing it as part of the code Vipassana session here is it will take some like several minutes, five to uh, depending on the size, it will take a several minutes for it to complete. And then once it's complete, you will be able to see this in the results. And that will take you to the model itself. Once you click that, uh, go to model, you will see these two things in the schema two fields. One is the label, another one is the features, two sections you'll see in the schema. So what each one means is described right here. One is, um, you will see the acti activation 49 field name. This represents the output output field. And features section, you can see input underscore one. This, this is not custom. You have to retain these names as it is. These represents the field that is expected to be input to the model. So this field, you will actually inf use this in your prediction query. So that's why the, these names should not be changed, right? You should keep it as it is. Basically, you can't change it because it's auto-generated. But remember to use this name in the um, prediction query, right? With this, once you see this, your model is created. That's it. Now you don't have much to do. The last step is use this model and predict your post. So let's assume I've already completed this step because all you have to do is just run this query. That's all. Right. So I've already run this. Now I'm going to execute this part to show you that the model is ready. So in for your yoga pose, what this one does is basically uses the model that you just created or loaded into BigQuery. And then it uh, takes the input that you're passing right now. Basically, you're passing one input and identify and predicting what image it is using the model you've created. That's it. So basically copy paste this qu qu query as it is and just change the name of the model as to what you have created. Um, and you will probably have to change the folder name if you don't have the downward dog, uh, down dog post copy. Um, you won't be executing this because you didn't create the model. But since I have the model already in place, I can create this. So um, again, this is yoga set underscore CV underscore 30 March. I'm going to create it as your listener. This is all fine. Um, Hmm. But my model is named as ResNet. Yoga poses ResNet. Yeah, same. Um, and then this is my new table that I've created, right? External table. So let's see if it references cross object, uh, cross data set. If not, we'll change the data set, no worries. This is the new data set I created for this uh, demo right now in this call. 
And then where regex contains this one, we don't have this file. Instead, we have warrior two. So let's copy that. Let's see first what we have in warrior two. We we'll use the file name correctly. Hmm. Seven zeros and one. We're almost done. Hold on for a one. That's it. So I'm going to run this to predict. It will take a few minutes, of course, because it's predicting. So I don't know when it will complete. So I don't want to keep you waiting. But if you see the code lab, once it's complete, you should see the results something like this. Uh, it will have in a nested format. It's not flattened. So for people who are data scientists and who are extensively doing research type of projects in data science, it's easy to infer this. If not, if you're like me, then um, I prefer to flatten it and denormalize this data set using this code right here. This is a, uh, sorry, this is a simple, uh, not a simple, it's a little bit like medium to complex SQL query, uh, SQL. This just copy paste this and replace the um, the ones that are within tags to your your own values. In this case, there's nothing, nothing much to replace because you'll only replace probably the data set name and the table name, model name, model name. That's it. Everything else remains the same. Here I mentioned as label logic. Um, depending on this data, you can write your own logic to say what you want to label it as, because ideally it will show because it's a pre-trained model, the result will be in the form of numbers, like you can see here. It will be in the form of numbers and percentage. You can convert this into percentage. And it also has identif it also has identifiers, but it won't convert that identifier into a label name. So I use my own logic to replace the identifier code into actual yoga names. You can use whatever logic you want to translate that. And if you run this query, you will be able to flatten this here, right here. As you can see, that's what I've done here in this query. Basically, I flattened it, and that's what you're seeing here. And based on the score and based on my logic, it will return the name of the yoga uh, result, which is the label. As you can see here, label is the field that I introduced. This is my own logic based on this label. So for 416 or within a range, I label it as downward dog. So you can write your own uh, logic for that based on the result. Once you analyze the result of your model or the prediction, you will be able to name that correctly. So once you flattened it, um, you will be able to see what uh, prediction result you have got for that one input that request that you've submitted. So in my case, in this code lab, it returned downward dog. And when I tried to uh, convert that into image using Python, it's, it gave me that po uh, posture. So that is it. Um, let's see if this is complete. No, it's still not complete. It is complete, but there is no data. Why? Maybe that file is not there. Maybe the data name is wrong possible the name that i passed in one dot jpg should be there just give me one sec hmm. Let me just go back to this query and see if it has it. Hmm, it is right there. Oh, sorry, this is the mistake. Uh, the path is wrong. Yeah. 
Okay, that was a mistake. I gave a wrong um, uh, bucket name, so that's why I gave the old previous bucket name that I copied from the code lab, but I changed the bucket name here, right, for demonstrating to you. So anyway, it'll take time, but the point is you will get a record that you can later on flatten or analyze in your own way. I Just one method of flattening is what I have shown here in this uh, code lab. You don't have to follow this method. It's up to you to write your own logic to flatten. I just suggested one method. But ultimately, your prediction result ends here. You can analyze it uh, or infer it, infer from it what you will, uh, typically. But this is one suggestion how you can infer it, which I have done in the code lab. So that's about it. Um, I'll stop right here. Uh, just one last thing I want you to know is you can also unify structured data and unstructured data basically by writing a join query. Uh, for that, what I did is, right now we have created only an external table and stored images in it. Now, I'm creating a structured table, like uh, a regular create table, table name, uh, rows and columns, right? Like you will create in any SQL uh, standard relational table format. Write that query, create a table with these four fields, all string, nothing fancy, and insert like four records. Say, um, downward dog, it focuses on um, your legs, and then health benefit is... Um, strengthens your hamstring or something like that and breath what breath you will do for that exhale so let's say that is the data you're entering and then when you when i'm writing the query i'm actually this is the select query so once you write that it will combine the from in the from construct it will combine the structured part which is uh the the yoga underscore health table which i just mentioned right here the schema part the for structured schema and then the unstructured schema, which is yoga underscore poses, which is the one that you created before the external table. So I'm joining these two using this condition right here in this field called pose. So basically, this pose will contain the name of the yoga pose, which is downward dog. And from the URI, I'm extracting the string and I'm comparing these two and I'm writing a join query. This is just if you know SQL and if you're writing join, join queries, this is a cakewalk. And I'll get this result. And again, I'm using the same Python code to uh, demonstrate uh, the conversion of this um, hashed value to image file. That's it. And basically, in the last point, I'm just telling you that you can access um, BigQuery queries from your Python notebook as well. And when I say access, you can execute from your Python notebook using magic commands. So that's about it. If you were able to create up to the object table and query the record that is there today, that is the intent of the lab today. Um, the other things are all educational. You can do it at your own time. The main point that you want that I want you to take away today is that you can do unstructured data storage with BigQuery and query it and create a model and do prediction on image data or any unstructured data just like you would with a structured data format. Maybe there's a, the, the steps are a little different, but you can do it. So that is the takeaway from today's test session. So I'll stop right here and um, see if you have any questions. I'll uh, stop the recording first. Sorry for going like 